Hi, welcome back to AP Physics 1, Unit 4, the Work Energy Power Unit. Um, so we're leading up to, here in this video, we're going to talk about mechanical energy, which is going to um, bring into our discussion in the next video on conservation of energy. So the first thing about it is um, any energy acquired upon which work is done is known as mechanical energy, right? So the way we think about mechanical energy, it's the energy possessed by an object due to two things. One is its motion. Right. And the other thing is its position. Right. And so the way you can think about mechanical energy, it's either going to be kinetic energy, right, which is our energy of motion. And then of the two potential energies, right, which is based on our energy of motion. <coughs> so think about mechanical energy is that it is total energy. Right. And so how do we find total? Well, we're going to simply just sum things up. OK. So objects that possess mechanical energy can do work. So now we kind of redefine what work is, right? Is we're transferring energy from one place to another. So if you remember the work energy theorem, <coughs> it's change, work is equal to change in kinetic energy. But in actuality, it's work is equal to change in energy, okay? And this delta E, right, is essentially our total kinetic or total mechanical energy. So mechanical energy is simply the mechanical energy of the is sorry is the sum of the object's kinetic energies and its potential energies so right now we've talked about two potential energies gravitational and spring okay right and before we talked about kinetic energy where we did one half mb squared we actually call that translational kinetic energy and then later in unit seven we'll define something called rotational kinetic energy which at this point in time, we're not going to worry about, okay, because we're going to assume all of our objects are going to be sliding objects and not rolling objects, okay? And this is how you calculate um, total mechanical energy. We just simply add up all the, the energies, <laughs> all right? So let's look at a couple of examples, right? So I don't know if it's a couple, it may only be one. So here we have an example. We have a bag of apples with a mass of 2.25 kilograms hanging from a spring, spring scale at a grocery store. Um, the apples stretch the um, scale 3.5 centimeters. The spring constant in the scale is 450 newtons per meter. And then if the bag of apples, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> is 1.2 meters above the floor, how much mechanical energy is in the bag earth, or bag scale earth system relative to the floor? So what they're saying is here's my floor. This is where I said H equal to zero meters. Okay, then that's more for my U sub G calculation. And they're saying that this is 1.2 meters. Inside the spring, <laughs> we stretch it 3.5 centimeters, okay, which now it does possess a spring potential energy because we've stretched the spring. And it also possesses a gravitational potential energy because we've moved the bag of apples or up a height, right? And they're saying that the system is everything, right? And so if the system does not include everything, that changes our calculation just a little bit, okay? And they tell you the reference point. They tell you relative to the floor, which is why H is equal to zero at the floor. So we're going to find the total mechanical energy. Now, there is no kinetic energy. I'll write it in the equation, but there is no kinetic energies because the apples, the apples are not moving, right? You put them in the scale, they just sit there. So we do MGH plus one half KX squared. And so we have 2.25 times 9.81 or 9.8 times 1.2 plus one half K, which is 450 times. And now again, you have to be careful. This is 3.5 centimeters. We need to divide that number by 100 to give us 0 0.035 meters. Um, let me move some of this stuff around. So E is equal to, again, uh, 2.25 times 9.8 times 1.2 plus 1 half times 450 times 0 
three five squared. And so the total mechanic, mechanical energy that the apples will possess is 27.6 joules. <coughs> okay, so we're talking about mechanical energy right now is because in the next video, we're going to talk about conservation of mechanical energy, which at this point in time, we're just doing a simple calculation. In the next video is when we're going to expand on it. And actually now what happens, let's say these something happens this spring and these apples begin to fall. Okay, that's our next video. Um, so that's going to be our conservation of mechanical energy.